This represents a massive body being pushed about by a force, just as a vehicle in free space might be pushed about by its rockets. The size of the circle shows the mass. The length of the arrow shows the strength of the force. The body is responding to the force in accordance with Newton's law. Newton's law links force, mass, and motion. It says that the velocity changes in proportion to the force. Here, the force and velocity are represented as they might be on the instrument panel of a spacecraft. If the force is zero, the velocity remains constant. If the force is non-zero, the velocity changes steadily in the direction of the force. The stronger the force, the faster the change. Here is the body moving under a non-zero force with the velocity arrow showing. The velocity changes steadily in the direction of the force. Here is a still picture of two gravitating bodies. The cross marks the center of mass. Newton's law of gravitation describes the force that each exerts on the other. The forces are equal and opposite, proportional to the masses, and inversely proportional to the square of the separating distance have the distance and you quadruple the force. If starting from rest, the two bodies move in response to their gravitational attraction, they collide. But if they are initially moving, they may not. Here is a still picture of the bodies in the course of motion. At the moment of the picture, they are moving at right angles to their line of centers, as shown by the flashing velocity arrows. Here is the subsequent motion. The force gets so strong as the bodies approach that the arrows go off the screen. The orbits are ellipses with a common focus at the center of mass. Again, a still picture of the two bodies in the course of motion. But this time moving faster. Now the bodies are so far apart and the forces are so weak that the arrows don't show. Again, the orbits are ellipses with a common focus at the center of mass. If the initial velocities are high enough, bodies will fly apart indefinitely. The paths are hyperbolas. Up to this point, we have chosen very special initial velocities. What happens if we start a pair of gravitating bodies with just any old initial velocities, like this?
The motion looks complicated, but it's really simpler than it looks. Here again is exactly the same motion. This time, watch the center of mass. The center of mass moves with constant velocity if it moves at all. Here's the same motion a third time. In a reference frame moving along with the center of mass, the motion looks simpler. With respect to the center of mass, the orbits are always conics, ellipses, hyperbolas, or in special cases, parabolas, circles, or line segments. For contrast, let's look at some other force laws. Here, the force gets stronger as the bodies move apart. In fact, the force is directly proportional to the cube of the separating distance. The motion is somewhat similar to that of a ball bouncing about inside a circular ring. The force is momentarily large when the ball strikes the ring, but is otherwise zero. This, in fact, is the limiting case for force laws with large positive powers of the distance. Here, the force varies inversely as the separating distance. The force gets stronger as the bodies approach, but not so rapidly as under the inverse square law. In general, the orbits do not close. These bodies are moving on circles under an inverse cube law. Circular motion is possible under any force law, but in this case, it is not stable. If anything retards the bodies ever so slightly, they collide. Here they are again, moving on circles. If anything accelerates them ever so slightly, they fly apart. Planetary systems could not exist under an inverse cube law, nor under any law with a higher negative power. These are a few examples, then, of the pure interaction of force and mass as it is described by Newton's law.